This episode is brought to you by Domain.com. If you need fast, reliable, and affordable web hosting, go to Domain.com and sign up today. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to get into another quick vid about cracking hashes. Uh, you may find this important uh, later on as we do some more video tutorials based upon uh, using Metasploit and Armitage to compromise machines, get their password hashes. Uh, if you did a SQL injection in and you dumped the SQL database and it had hashes in there for the user's passwords, which is likely a scenario most of the time, uh, you can free, feel free and confident to be able to crack those hashes. Uh, so a couple of things we're going to need is we're going to be using Hashcat, which is included in Kali Linux, the command line version. We're going to be using Hash Identifier to check out what types of hashes we're up against cracking. And we're going to be using basic password lists uh, and some rule sets that Hashcat has conveniently set up for us. Um, you can get password lists from a myriad of places. I'm going to have a very basic one up on the downloads page, but uh, you know, feel free to surf the web, check out some password uh, you know, files and stuff like that, the password lists, so you can get your hands on the latest and greatest. So let's get started. Let's fire up our Kali Linux box here. Now the layout that I have is I like to keep everything organized within a directory structure. So I created a directory cracking uh, in my root directory and inside here there is two directories hashes and pass lists and obviously hashes contains a file that holds our hashes to be cracked and pass list contains our password list. Okay. So uh, first we want to generate some hashes for this demo. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up web browser here, browse over to md5.cz. Now uh, I'm going to make some basic ones here. You can see I've already been playing around in here. Um, we're going to try to crack ones that also have capital letters, numbers, things like that. So first one I'm going to make is one, two, three, QWERTY, which I really hope nobody's using that password. Okay, so we just hit the hash darling hash button and we copy this hash go back into our terminal here. Now uh, let's go into our hashes directory and I already have a hashes file set up here under hash.txt. Now you can name it whatever you like. Uh, so I'm just going to vi hash.txt and I am going to insert this one hash here. And I'm going to add a couple more in here just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, this time here we're going to make it QWERTY and then with a capital Q and then one, two, three. And we're going to go ahead and hash that out. Okay, copy and paste this. Well, now it's important that you leave no space before or after the hashes uh, because Hashcat may not pick that up. So let's go ahead and just do a couple more here. Uh, let's do that. You believe it, uh, believe it or not, there's a lot of times where I find simple passwords like password one and stuff like that. Um, people think they're getting away from it and being safe because we're encouraged to, you know, use a capital letter and at least some numbers. Well, it's not really safe and we're going to show you how. So let's add in one more. Uh, love cats, right? Let's do... And uh, let's add that in here. And let's just do one more for the heck of it. Okay. Let's go ahead and copy this. All right, so we're just going to write our changes and quit our file. So let's clear this screen out here and let's get back one directory into our main working directory. So now I'm going to introduce to you hash identifier, right? So we should grab a hash out of the hashes file. And we need to find out what type of hashing a logarithm or encryption logarithm we're up against. So the tool we're going to use for that is called hash identifier, or hash ID for short. So the command to use that is just hash tac identifier. And you can use autocomplete, of course. Just copy and paste your hash in here and hit enter. 
And you're going to see it scrolls a bunch of stuff to, towards the bottom here, but that says the least possible hashes are. The more likely possible hashes are MD5, domain cache credentials, MD4. Well, nobody really uses that anymore, so let's go with MD5. Okay, so we know that. So let's control C and get out of that and just clear the screen. So we know we're working with an MD5 password hash, right? Or some sort of MD5 hash. Okay, so now we need to fire up Hashcat. Of course, you need the password list in order to make this work. And we are also going to use rules that uh, Hashcat has inside of it. Now, let's go ahead and type in the command Hashcat and then tac tac help to list all the available options and flags. Okay, so going from the very top here, uh, just to give you a basic idea, now I'm gonna post a link for Hashcat's wiki site. I recommend that you go in there and read all about it. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, so the couple of flags that we're gonna be focused on here is tac m, which is for hash type. See references below and we'll look at that in just a second. And tac a, which is attack mode, again, see references below, which we will also be looking at. When you first start up Hashcat for the first time, it's going to be presented with the uh, new EULA agreement. Uh, just hit yes or accept, whatever it was, I, I can't remember, uh, and then continue on. Okay, so we're not going to really worry about any of this. This is kind of complicated, uh, you know, when you have to salt your password hashes and stuff like that. Uh, and we'll get into that in advanced, you know, videos that we're going to be doing. Okay, so the next option we're going to be using here is TAC R, which is rules file. And I'm going to show you how to find the rules file, and it ends in the extension dot rule. So scrolling down here, we're going to look at the attack modes, right, which is straight, which means it doesn't change anything. It just it goes word for word and case for case uh, of what your password file actually says. So if somebody typed in a, a password with a capital letter and you don't have that password with a capital letter in your file, you're kind of screwed. Uh, a combination attack is going to change it up a little bit and it's going to go ahead and use capital letters and uh, you know it's going to put numbers together with you know commonly used words that are in the password list it's going to reverse them and you know kind of mash them all together and see what's the best fit the hash types are as listed here below but we know that our hash from hash identifier said it's md5 so we're going to be using zero right and remember hash types is the tac m command and attack modes is the tac a command right so First things first, let's go ahead and look for the the actual rules files. So in any Linux system, uh, it, we have a system that uh, indexes our files in our in our system to be able to search them out, uh, kind of like equivalent to the Windows uh, built-in search function to you know find text files or exes or whatever. Uh, so that command is to first update your database if it's out of date. It's update db and then you hit enter and it may take a few minutes depending but since we know that hashcat came with Kali Linux when we installed it we don't have to worry about updating our db okay so what we need to do is issue the locate command and then we want to put an asterisk for a wildcard for anything before this dot rule and it's going to find everything that has the extension dot rule so you can see there's quite a few results here Scrolling up to the top, user share hashcat rules is it looks like where all those rules uh, files actually live, right? So let's just go ahead and copy this link, or copy this directory, I should say. And then if we went to CD over to there, just to show you where they are, and issue an ls command, you can see that there's quite a bit in here. There's elite speak one, which I guess is you know, for the people that like to spell letters with numbers like E equals three for some reason, um, there's a combinator rule, which is what we're going to be using. Okay, and the beautiful thing about the combinator rule is it allows us to uh, use case sensitive and not case sensitive and randomize it all and put it all together. And it's it's a pretty cool rule set. Um, depending on which rule set you use is going to take a while longer or a while less. Uh, combinator dot rule works pretty fast. Best 64 rule, I believe, is for base 64 encoding, which you'll find on a lot of, uh, you know, you go to websites as uh, 
access denied, you know, username and password required, and it pops up that seven, uh, second uh, secondary dialog box asking for a username and password. Well, most of those uh, passwords are stored in the password file, and they're hashed with base64, so you can, if you found those, you can crack them uh, with that probably. Uh, and there's a bunch of different ones in here. If you want to play with each one of them or look at them, you can always cat them out. Like if we cat it out, perfect rule. You can see that uh, if we scroll up here a little while, you can see that this one has minimal entries in here. Now, uh, also, if you want to look at the uh, how to create custom rules and stuff like that, you can go to their website. It's on there as well. And again, I'll put that link in the description. So let's get out of here and let's go back to our uh, cracking directory. Okay, let's get rid of all this. So our command is going to go as such. It's hash cat. And then we want to always bring up the help section, if we haven't already, just to give us a reference to quickly scroll back up, right? Because we don't want to keep typing out commands and then having to erase them and scroll back up. It's a waste of time. Okay. So uh, keep in mind too, guys, that when you're cracking password hashes, depending, it, it depends on a few factors on how fast it's going to crack. Number one, Hashcat works off your GPU, not your CPU. Okay, so the faster your GPU is, the faster you're going to be able to crack, uh, you know, password hashes. Uh, second of all, it depends on the complexity of the password. Third of all, it depends on your password list, uh, and fourth of all, it depends on what type of encryption algorithm it's using. So there's a few factors in there that are going to, you know, dictate the time that it takes to crack passwords successfully, okay? And you may not get every single one. For instance, my passwords are so lo obnoxiously long and they have so many different random things in there that I'm pretty sure, and I've tried to crack them before with 60 gig word lists and it was not possible. So keep that in mind when you're making your passwords, right? Uh, anyway, moving along. So the, the command is going to go as such. It's hashcat tack m. Remember, we want to use that for what type of hash a logarithm we're using. So now if we scroll up, we can remember hash type was md5, so we're going to put 0. So it's tack m space 0. Then tack a for the attack mode. And if we scroll back up, we're going to want to use the combination one, right? Because we want to try to get the best results we can. So we're just going to enter in number one. And now we have to put the directory on where our password hashes actually lie, right? So we're going to do um, hashes and then hash.txt, right? So the very next directory that we want to put after that, you space it and then you put another directory, is where a password list actually lives. Now Kali Linux does have some password lists included in it. I really haven't messed around with them, so I couldn't tell you how good they are, but like I said, there's tons of them out there, guys. Um, if you ever decide to download a bunch of smaller password lists and you want to uh, combine them into one major, major list, okay, uh, make sure you find a tool that will, it's called a deduper, and what that will do is take out any kind of duplicate passwords, numbers, combinations, things like that. Uh, it'll check it, so if you have two of the same words like, you know, happy in there it'll say hey look happy's in there twice so you just go in and take it out right some of the tools will actually automatically do it for you as well so anyway getting back to hashcat the next directive that you want to put in is where your password list lives so we know that's in pass list and then just the regular file password now i didn't add an extension like txt to this one just because i just didn't feel like it at the time when i unzipped it Okay, now keep in mind the password list I'm using that we're going to be uploading to the website is rather old. It does have a lot of passwords and, and different types of numbers and stuff in there. Um, but there are more uh, common ones, more more newer ones out there in the market. So, you know, you can download them for free. Uh, CrackStation has a good password list, but uh, he asked for donations, and it's definitely worth it, guys. Throw the guy a buck. Uh, he doesn't specifically ask for a specific amount. You can throw him a dollar and you could be able to download the list. So keep that in mind. Check it out, uh, CrackStation. So anyway, uh, after that, so we've input now our hash type, our attack method or mode, and then our hash list, our password list, and now we're going to give it the dash R directive. And if we scroll up here, 
you're going to see the rules. Tac R means rules, and then so it's rules file use tac r and then the rule file that we want to use. Well we know that our rules were in user share hash cat so on and so forth when we did our locate command right so we want to just type in or you could copy and paste it if you wanted to I'm just gonna type it in because I know where it is and then we're gonna use the combinator uh, combinator rule okay so Let's see how many passwords we can crack. I actually haven't tried to crack uh, these before, so let's just go ahead and take a look and see what we come up with. So you can see already, it's giving you a live display. We've already cracked one, Love Cats, with a capital L and a capital C. We've cracked Password 101, which is capital P. We've cracked QWERTY with a capital Q, 123. And then 123 QWERTY we cracked. And let's see if it's going to give us anything else on any of the other... Uh, hashes that we had in there. Now keep in mind too it also when it's done writing it'll tell you. Um, if you if it didn't crack a hash it's gonna tell you and it looks like it may not crack this one so we will show you the results of that uh, and if not I'll just do a quick demo. I'll make a hash that I know it's not gonna crack. Um, but uh, when it's done it'll just return you to a command prompt and whatever current working directory you're in it will write a file called uh, hashcat.pot and that's where it's going to store all the things it's cracked for you so that's a good thing to have because well of course if you're cracking usernames and passwords or you're cracking wireless networks so on and so forth you're going to need that for later okay so you can see here uh, it recovered four out of five hashes okay so that means it didn't crack all of them so now you must be thinking well what's the problem it could be a couple of different problems the combinator rule set may have not worked but more than likely what the cause is is that uh, it actually hasn't wound up um, using a good password file so that's why it's important to have a password file so don't get discouraged try to find another password file uh, or simply just move past that one right so that's pretty much it guys and if you did an ls here now you're gonna see the hashcat.pot file so if you cat out hashcat dot pot you can see that it recovered the hashes in here as well as printing it live on the screen for you. Okay, so we wonder which ones it didn't uh, it didn't crack. Well, you can simply open up another tab here, and then you can go into cat out your hashes file. Oops, cd hashes and then cat hash dot text okay so let's match up the last digits of the hashes to see which one it didn't crack so we got b4 here and it looks like b4 was not cracked or b4 was cracked down here as a one two three qwerty and let's see 4b well that one I, I believe was cracked as well yep 4b is right here so then the next one brings us down to E5. And it looks like E5 was cracked. And the next one, F8. F8 was cracked. So it looks like the last one that we put in at 28 was not cracked. So secure password was not cracked. So now let's take a look at our word list and see if it contains any of these words in that list, right? So 28 was that. And of course, the one that did not crack was 28. So let's go ahead and CD here and then CD into pass lists. And then cat, uh, yeah, we're going to cat out our password file and then we are going to use the grep command and if you need help with the grep command you don't feel like googling post it on our forums at learnnetsec.com uh, if you haven't signed up already it's a great site the community's going really good the forums are going really good and, and there's a lot of good help there's everybody from beginners to what it seems to be advanced users in there so everybody's been super helpful helping each other so uh, definitely check that out um, besides that shameless plug we're going to go ahead and grep some of those words so I want to grep secure 
Well, looks like secure is not in that password list, right? So let's go ahead and issue that same command and grep password. It's got to be in that list, I would imagine. Right, because it cracked password 101. And sure enough, look at that. There's password, password 1, password 2. Now the beautiful thing about using Hashcat with a combination attack is it doesn't matter how many passwords are in there. You know, this could be password 22 or whatever. It's going to grab that. So I guarantee you if we added the word secure to our password list, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now by doing a simple echo command. And remember, when we're doing an echo command and we want to append to a file, it's always the double, double greater than less than signs, right? So echo double greater than less than, and we are going to echo the word secure into, uh, actually I'm sorry, it's echo the word secure greater than less than times two, and then into password. So now if we grep for secure, now it's in there, right? See it right here. So let's try to crack that hash again. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again now that we've echoed in that uh, word. Okay, you see it's cracking pretty fast. Now keep in mind guys, of course I'm running Kali Linux in a VM here, so it does lag a little bit, especially doing resource intensive things like this, and I don't have a dedicated video card to it, so GPU power is not that fantastic. Okay, and there we go. So it looks like all the passwords are now... Uh, or all the hashes now were cracked. So again, you have to have a good working password list. Um, keep in mind, it doesn't hurt to add things to your password list. I mean, you could use tools that are built into Kali Linux like Crunch and build like a super crazy uh, password list, but you know, you're going to spend hours upon hours upon hours doing that. It's better to find a, another list that somebody else has made. It, trust me, I like doing everything myself, but it's better off to find another list that somebody else made that we know that works. Uh, like I said, crack stations out there, and when I find that link, I will post that in the description as well. So that's your basic overview of how to use Hashcat with Hash Identifier to crack MD5 hash. So keep in mind, when we do the penetration testing part of the series, and we grab hashes from a Linux machine as well as a Windows machine, I'm going to show you the different methods on how to crack those passwords as well, and I'm also going to show you uh, how to use a different tool, uh, Johnny, which is the GUI version of John the Ripper. Now, John the Ripper, again, it uses CPU power, so um, you know it is much slower. Um, so you know, Hashcat using GPU power for whatever reason it is just much faster. Uh, that's what I prefer. Um, but again, it's really your preference and. Most of the time, I will crack you know my my basic stuff and even my Linux stuff in Hashcat, and the other stuff I will actually crack in Johnny, like the Windows stuff, because it just does a much better job, and you don't have to edit the files and split the usernames from the salts from the passwords and all that good stuff. So we'll get in, into all that in the next video, guys. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, definitely check out our website, LearnNetSec.com. Join the community over there. Join the conversation. Um, we have a lot of cool things going on there and events and stuff like that. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel here. Check us out on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at LearnNetSec. And uh, spread the word, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.